what's up everybody welcome to another edition of the slightly warped podcast i'm rick i'm joined by big show show how are you what up what up what up i'm good how are you sir i'm, I'm good um if y'all don't already know and you haven't looked at the title of the video that you clicked on or or listening to depending on where you are you know that there's going to be a lot of star wars talk here the problem with Star Wars fans as of late, i.e. these last several years, everybody is decisive about everything. And uh, not decisive, excuse me, divisive. Um, and it's okay. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. But the fan base is just a little too toxic sometimes. Now... That doesn't mean it's not warranted sometimes, and we will get to the acolyte in a little bit later. Because I got a lot of things to say about episode three. And everybody who's behind episode four, I need them to put a, pull a rabbit out of their hat for this one. Because it... Uh, okay. Let's work backwards, though. All right, so I I was born in 70, so I was around for the uh, originals. When were you exposed, show? I was born in 74, so I was also around for the originals. Okay. Um, Just from the original trilogy, Star Wars, you know, we'll call it a new hope for the younger generation. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Do you have a favorite out of that one? Empire. See, that's why I like you on this podcast. It's what I'm talking about. Because great minds think alike. I mean, there, there's a lot of people that, uh, my wife for one, she believes that Jedi is the uh, best one of the OT. Being younger, I get that. She's seven years my junior. So... I mean, when it's she, a close race. I when mean, she it, was it first is. exposed to it, uh, she got exposed to Jedi, so that's probably why. So I can see that. Just like really young people are down with the sequel. I mean, the prequel trilogy. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to... You can speak on something if, if you don't like one of the original three I'm not because I like all three of those movies. Empire just happens to be my favorite. I mean, if I had to rank them, Jedi would still be third, but you'd be, mm -hmm. you know, episode five, four, and then six. That, that's the way I see it. I mean, hands down. Um, there was just something about Empire. I mean, they, they upped the ante. Everything that they did in the first movie, they took it up a notch in Empire. Everything. The action, the adventure. Um, it was more faster paced. It was darker, too. And that's what uh, really drew me to it. It was, it was the first film that I saw where the good guys didn't win. I mean, th they didn't. There was no happy ending there. And... At the same time, it had that <gasps> factor because you couldn't wait for the next Star Wars movie because you had to see what was going to happen now. I mean, think about it. Han Solo's frozen. He's on his way to jab the hut. Uh, Luke's got an artificial hand. Uh, looks like the galaxy has no hope. The Empire has won. Dun, dun, dun. You know, all that. He, he, you just found out that Vader was his dad. Yeah. Know? The whole nine, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have all that go down, and then you find out your family history is kind of shady. So, you know, I think what ruined what ruins Jedi for me mm -hmm. is the same kind of principle that ruined Phantom Menace for me. Do tell Jar 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 Binks and the Ewoks all are in the same category. Really. For me, I wasn't I a fan I, of the I Ewoks. I don't have the Ewoks on that level. Jar Jar is 
they took it a little too far. You're right. It, too much slap. I'm just talking about with hokey character, you know, hokey yeah. character that really didn't have anything to do with the story. From the beginning, though, I got the Ewoks because I understood that they look cute and cuddly, but they're actually cannibals. So right, but you, but they you never seen them eat nobody. They 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 couldn't do anything except hit you with a stick. I mean, yeah, they worked well with them. But I it just to me it was hokey in that time frame. I mean, I still liked it. Don't get me wrong, but I just the Ewoks are not my favorite characters. And I get that. I get that. Which is probably why you never see them ever again in any Star Wars movie. That, that could be true. Now, you talked about Jar Jar, so if you look at the prequel trilogy, what which one is your favorite, and how would you rank them? Episodes 1, 2, and 3. 2, 3, 1. Mm, okay, we're a little different there. I go 3, 2, 1. Um, I just love... Revenge of the Sith because it was the closest thing to me to the original trilogy as far as uh, the movie as a whole was concerned uh, I did like Attack of the Clones I just felt that it dragged on a little bit too much when it shouldn't have and there could have been more action in it less romance I understand we have to put Anakin and Padme together but come on speed it up um, the first movie had a lot of that hokiness that you talked about. Didn't really care for Jar Jar. It, it put me off. Uh, the running joke is, you know, when it came out originally on VHS and DVD, you fast forward to the part where Darth Maul opens the door and uh, he's standing there and they're getting ready to face off. Yeah, with the first one, you know, I could have done without Jar Jar. I could have done without the pod racing. I could have mm -hmm. done without all that. Another hope um, thing, yeah. I, I do like the storyline between Queen uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan. You know, you get to see who taught Obi Wan, mm -hmm. and it lays the foundation of of how Obi Wan, you know, lost Anakin in the long run. You know, because he wasn't a Jedi master when he took on the Padawan. Um. I just like the Clone Wars slightly better than Revenge of the Sith because you knew what Revenge of the Sith was about before it ever came out. You knew what was going to happen before it ever came out. The Clone Wars was a mythical thing they always talked about in the original series, in the original trilogy. So, you know, my father fought in the Clone Wars, you know, you know that's when Luke first met Obi-Wan, you know. Mm -hmm. So to see the the how it started and why it started, um, I, I I've always just thought it was more intriguing. And I get that, and, and, and I agree with you about the pod racing thing. And I I, I got to give all the blame on that to George Lucas because of the way it was shot. It was a little bit too wee. And if they had shot that thing like Death Race three thousand, it'd be much better. But that's just me. That's my opinion. Uh, the only way I differ with you is um, I did prefer Revenge of the Sith over Attack of the Clones, even though we knew what was coming, because I compare that to, what's another good one, Titanic. Very entertaining movie, but you know what's going to happen. So, you know, sometimes... You, True, you but Titanic wasn't, Titanic wasn't about the boat, the boat sinking. It was about the love story between... True. Jack and Rose. So you didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know who was going to live. Well, you knew it you was going to end badly for somebody. Right. But like you just seen the storyline of mm -hmm. what we've been told for five movies. Yeah. In Revenge of the Sith. And I'm not saying it's, I mean, it's close for me. I just slightly give the edge to Clone Wars. Uh, just because it was, it's kind of a new concept that we always thought we knew, but didn't, mm -hmm. you know, how were the clones? What were the clones? You know, that type of thing. That's uh, true. It did. It did answer those questions. And, and, and I like the fact and, that it was Django that was the, uh, the template for the clones. 
And I think what what's bring is because it's the first time we ever saw Yoda fight. Yes. Yes. And I think that's that's why it sticks out, you know, for me. I like that. I like that line of thinking. I mean, you know. Uh, but they're super close. Don't yeah, get me wrong. And, they're super close. Neither answer is right or wrong. It's just our. Oh, opinion. no, no. It's Yeah, yeah. And since. I mean, when about, they come on, I'm still going to watch them. <laughs> right. Since we Although are talking Phantom about Menace, I will, I will bypass that movie every time it comes on. Except for the last 15 minutes. Nope. I'll still you, bypass you it. You watch the sword fight? I don't even care about Darth Maul. He only comes back in the car. He only comes back in in the cartoons. Fair enough. All right. Every other bad guy, every other Sith, mm -hmm. was in multiple films, except for Darth Maul. Yeah, they did do him kind of dirty like that, didn't they? He was he was too easily um, beaten. However, Snoke it did went set out like up a punk too, though. He did well. That whole series, where I know you were talking yeah, about well, that, but that's a whole yeah. other story. But you know that did that. I guess the crucial part of that fight was Obi Wan realized that the high ground is smart to have. Yeah, yeah, and Aaron, Anakin's although arrogance. He, although it didn't he had the low ground, so he still won. So I guess that was a moot point. Who, who Obi-Wan? Wasn't Obi-Wan the one hanging down in the shaft and he jumped over Maul and cut him in half? Oh yeah. For for that one, yeah. But he took over. So he I guess Maul he didn't really surprise. learn a lesson. Yeah, Anakin's move was a little bit it was similar, but because Obi-Wan had did it, he knew what Anakin was gonna do. He knew do. how to counter. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um yeah, I hate to bring it up, but we're going to have to because we're talking Star Wars. The sequel trilogy. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, it's got some good points to it, but it's my least favorite trilogy and it is very, very flawed. And this is where the fan base became so heavily divided. I don't know about you, but the Force Awakens would be my favorite one out of that simply because of the nostalgia factor. I really didn't like what happened with uh, the second movie of The Last Jedi because Ryan Johnson just did a total 180 and didn't pick up with the story. I, mean, I don't mind you doing different things, being different, but pick up with the story. Don't just throw it in the garbage and what story are you talking about when ray originally went to the island and she was going to have luke train train her in the original film deleted scene luke is actually levitating a bunch of rocks when she comes to see him using his jedi powers for whatever reason ryan johnson pled with J.J. Abrams, don't use that scene. Just have him looking at her. Don't use that scene. I've got something else in mind. Everybody thought it was going to be something really, really great. Unfortunately, Ryan Johnson decided that Luke cut himself off from the Force. He wasn't going to be a Jedi anymore. He was just going to be a crazy old hermit. And that's the story we got. They shit on Luke's character. And everything Mark Hamill told him, Luke wouldn't do that. Ryan Johnson was like, no, in this one he is. And, and you know, a lot of people in the fan base will never forgive him for that. And I didn't like the uh, that long-ass bar scene on Casino Planet or whatever. It, it was too long. They were running with those weird animal yeah. horses, whatever they were. Yeah. Um... Man, if if I had to pick a favorite, it's going to be the last one out of the three. Really? I like the concept behind that movie. I don't like the way it actually played out. Mm -hmm. Like like the fact that uh, 
Palpatine wasn't necessarily dead. He was surviving off of the negative energy of that planet as Somehow. a clone. Well, it's it's the same way in the original books that the original Emperor did as well, which mm -hmm. is probably why I liked it. Uh, I did not like the fact that she was a Palpatine. However, that does explain why she's so incredibly strong in the Force. Um, I didn't mind the second one as much as 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 you did. Uh, I I I thought that, I mean, yeah, they did kind of shit on Luke's character, but I thought at towards the end they kind of redeemed him with him projecting himself, you know, from a yes, whole planet away. Um, I don't like the fact that he just kind of that that caused him to lose all of his force powers and he just died. I thought that was kind of stupid. Uh, but for the most part, it was okay. I just I like the concept the darkness of the last one. Um, and I really hate Kylo Ren. Wow. Cause I thought mm -hmm. if, if you, if you remember when, when uh, force awakens was in the previews and everything before it came out, you kept showing that deformed helmet of Vader and him talking about how he's going to pick up the mantle. Mm -hmm. Kylo, Kylo Ren is a weak ass punk. I mean, he really is weak. Yeah. So it's like, you can't pick up no mantle of Vader, you know. Even though they tried to have him have the Raven slash Vader type voice mask. Yeah, it just, it didn't work out for me. Here's my thing where that went wrong. Think about this. Somebody's in a meeting at Disney and they're like, yeah, he wants to be his grandfather. He wants to rule the galaxy. If anybody told him about his grandfather, they would have also told him, yeah, he switched sides at the end. He realized he was wrong. Didn't that part get told in the stories? Come on, Kylo. But don't, the only person that knew that would have been Luke. I'm sure he would have told Leia. Because somebody had to tell Kylo that, hey, that was your grandfather. True. Unless Luke told him during his Jedi I mean, training. Could have been, yeah. I mean, Could've either been. way, either way, if he's going to bring up Darth Vader, he's going to have to bring up the entire story. Because and I also think the big problem with the last three is the fact that George Lucas had nothing to do with them. Yeah, that, man, Disney dropped the ball on that. He even said in meetings before the first film, he offered suggestions and like, those are nice, but we're going to go in a different direction. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, technically... He sold his right, so it's his problem. But I just, I, I, I think that's a huge you, problem because it, it stemmed, it stemmed away from the original seven, eight, nine. Like they're nowhere close. No, Ray was Ray wasn't even a character. I I just believe that if if Ray had some type of hardship to learn from. That would have made her a much better character in the third movie. You know, in the second movie, if 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 something had happened that she had to learn from, doesn't have to get a hand cut off or anything like that. Doesn't even have to be a lightsaber fight. Just some ultimate thing that would put her in a position where she's got to face her fears or learn a lesson or something like that. It would have just, it would have made that character so much better. By contrast, I didn't like what they did with Kylo's character. After all that he did, killed his father, tried to kill his mother, and then at the end, he, he reverts to the light side. Just because. Um, he should have stayed on the dark side. Period. Um, but, the dark side was, but the dark side was destroyed, wasn't it? With his help. He helped Ray. Uh, right. So, but there is no, he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to keep the dark side intact. He's too weak. That's true. I mean, they, they could have did so much with his character as well. Oh um, yeah. They could have made him, they, they could have made him a force to be working with, but they, they could have showed not so much. They could have showed how Snoke dealt with him to make him what he was. 
Yeah, Snoke was a pussy too. Yeah. I mean, all these bad guys, and it's like, it's like a four-piece jigsaw puzzle. If you can't solve that, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, these are the three movies that I wouldn't be upset if they decided to redo. I wouldn't be upset either. I mean, even if Disney was the ones redoing it, you learned your lesson. Here's the problem, well, though. Well, George is back in the fold now. George now. is back. Yeah, right. He's back in the fold now. So that's why I said that's why the 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 shows that are coming out are so that's why we like them so much. You know what I mean? You know, like the Obi-Wan Vader show and the Mandalorians and all that stuff. That that's the um Ahsoka series. Well, you know, like I mentioned, the fan base is divided. So is uh, Lucasfilm, because you've got Dave Filoni, who is yeah. all about George. You've got Kathleen Kennedy, who's all about girl power and a dollar. Yeah. You don't go to a convention with a t-shirt that says the force is female. You lose people like that. And, and, and regardless of that, I'm not even talking about gender, race, anything like that. The one thing that she did that pissed me off was when she was asked, you know, right before The Force Awakens, you know, look at all this rich history that we have with Star Wars. Which direction are you going to go? And she said it's really hard to come up with a story because there isn't that much literature. We had three decades of novels, comics, all that. So don't tell you, me that you could have did have... seven, eight, nine off of the Timothy Zahn series. Exactly. And it would have been perfect. Exactly. But that's where I like Dave Filoni. He's like, oh, you didn't want to go that route? I'll give you Thrawn. Yeah. And he's kind of rebooting the universe back yeah. to where it should be. But <clears throat> they and Star Wars actually needs a new trilogy that has nothing to do with the Skywalker saga. Unfortunately. And this is where this comes in. Reports are that Disney is finishing up or starting a script. I can't remember which one it was, but it's episode 10. They're calling it episode yeah. 10. So they're continuing and it's called a new beginning. This is all legend yeah. because several media outlets have put that title down, but Disney themselves hasn't, has, hasn't confirmed it. And I think the reason why they haven't is because they want to see what public perception is, and then that will determine whether or not they actually go through with it, or they're like, nope, nope, that's not the title, this is. Um, and it's a Ray movie. Don't know if any of the other yeah, characters... Yeah, I did hear about it. that. And I know what you said about it, leaving the Skywalkers alone. Ray has already called herself a Skywalker. Don't know if that's yeah. going to stick. I mean, of course it will. Um, but they need to move on to and and move on could be go back to the old republic. Um, you know, and and tell the stories of tell an origin story of Yoda. Um, you know, tell an origin story of Mace Windu. You can do a trilogy off of Mace Windu after yeah. you know he got pushed out the window. There's a lot of Things that they can do that would really satisfy the Star Wars fan base. Um, but Ray isn't it. The only way I can see this Ray movie actually working, go back to the three in the sequel trilogy. She was basically what they call a Mary Sue. Hey, I can do anything. I can do it easily. No problems. People don't want that. People want to see you overcome an obstacle. Give her an obstacle to overcome in this movie. And whether it's a standalone movie or they're going to have a whole new trilogy, something has to happen to make the story worth watching. But you know, in the in you know, in episode seven, eight, nine, none of the force wielders were tough. 
None of them. Compared to what we're used to. Yeah. I mean, I mean really, Ray was is strong in the force, but really, what did she do that was so great? Well, she has she has force healing in five minutes. She has no. She accidentally uh, learned force lightning when she thought accidentally? she killed Chewie. Yeah, when she was I trying mean, to pull the uh, ship back. I know, but accidentally. I mean, that's the Palpatine in her. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. I I'm redo redo hit the reset button. It, it'd be nice, but the powers that be are going to stand on this until the end of time. So you can't redo it, but you can. Let's actually let's actually get Luke Skywalker's uh, kids involved. Spoiler alert: He has to still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's another thing I didn't like about the sequel trilogy. They screwed everything up as far as the kids. Luke yeah, it was only one. Had a wife, one Marge and he had one son named Ben. Not Han and Leia. They had twins, but they were Jason and I forget the girl's name. But yes, that's that. I thought I thought he, they had two, and Han and Leia had three. They may have had three. You're right. I, I need to read my books again. But in either case, they. Just, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Again, they shit it over Luke because he was married to Mara Jade. Who? That's another good movie that would have been because she tried to kill him at one point. You know how? Did, yeah. How does that come along? You go from she trying was, to kill somebody she, to trying to marry somebody. She was Thrawn's main assassin. That's true. Um, please, Dave Filoni, put her in the. Uh, Season two of Ahsoka. Now that uh, Thrawn is back in the universe, and you know, I I'll take that CGI Luke Skywalker if you can, you know, put him in a few episodes. It worked out great in the Mandalorian. That wasn't CGI. That well, was an I'm actual sorry. actor. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was. It, what do they call that uh, though? Uh, where you change features on their face? Uh, not motion capture, but deep fake. Deep fake, where they tried to make it look more like Luke. The actor actually really does look like Mark Hamill, a young Mark Hamill. Does he? Yeah, that's that's, that's was why because I thought it was CGI. Hmm. Get that dude back in here. We we could use him. So but no, yeah. you're right. It looks like he was the only son. He was the only child, Ben. And that's the of other thing. Myra and Luke. Luke grew up on the desert planet Tatooine. So he was used to the wizard wandering around Ben. He talked to him several times. He knows Ben. You know, how does Han have a son and say, hey, Leia, yeah, we'll name him Ben? Right. I don't know. Yeah, they had they had three children. Um, twins named Jason and Jaina, and their okay. youngest son was named Anakin. Anakin, okay, I could see that. Leia's gonna name it after her dad. Got it. Okay, but not Ben. And that's how Luke reestablishes the Jedi Order. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that would have been a wonderful trilogy. You could do that in one movie. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. I have, I at digress. this point, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it in a TV series at this point. At this point, I'll take it in a few flashbacks. Just show me something, you know? Um, but that's just me. That's all I know. Um, you know, you know, it's kind of like in the Mandalorian where you saw the flashback where, you know, Luke was building the Jedi, the new Jedi temple. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, at least Dave Filoni tried to show us something. And he made Luke a badass again with that scene in The Mandalorian at the end of season two. Yeah, that one made my nipples hard. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the part as soon, where... As soon as you've seen the X-Wing come in. 
you're like ooh, ooh. when I saw the green lightsaber and the black glove holding it, I'm like, yeah. I knew it was him as soon as the X Wing showed up. Who else Actually, could it have I been? Thought, I thought it would be him, but then I'm like, nah, they they'll screw with us. They're screwing with us. But once I saw the green lights, they were like, yeah. Um, well, big show, this is the part where it's gonna get real ugly. I need to talk about the acolyte, Disney's latest offering. We've talked about offerings from Lucasfilm from the past all the way up until now. We were both, you know, kind of like, eh, eh, for episodes one and two. Episode three, man, it is a mixed bag. Um, I didn't like the fact that the entire episode was the 16 years ago. You could have did this in half of that episode. You don't want to take a whole episode to do that. And what happened in, and we might as well say full on spoiler alert, because if you haven't seen it yet, guess what? We, we shoot this thing on Tuesdays. Episode four is dropping tonight. So may burn the building down. Okay. How do you burn stone? How do you burn metal? You don't. I mean, it's got to. It can melt, but that's got to be superheated. Um, but it still happens. Yeah, Brick but, houses catch fire all the time. But here's the thing. And that whole May, place wasn't made out of stone. May is out for revenge. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking, why is she out for revenge? She's the one that set the place on fire. How did the Jedi get in there so quickly? There's something that was conveniently left out and if you looked in that episode when he has uh i forget the other girl's name the good one when saul has her and he's leading her out to safety you see all those bodies laying there there's no smoke around them there's no fire i am wondering if they were trying to get into the temple the witches wouldn't let them in and there was a fight i'm wondering if they weren't sabered down That's just my theory. It's not a bad theory. I'm on kind of like the opposite of you. I, I actually enjoyed that episode very well. I Did think you? that um, I, I, there were a few things that, you know, I was like, eh, you know, but I do think that it was okay that the whole show was about the 16 years ago because it's laying the foundation of, uh, you know, why May was what she was, you know, but um, she seemed like she was confused. I love you, sister. We're going to be together forever. No, I'm going to kill you. Which is it? Well, it's because the sister lied to her and didn't lie to the Jedi. And she's and she. Um, She digested the entire storyline that the witches uh, were feeding her. Mm -hmm. um, from what we just, if they don't explain anything more of that particular event, mm -hmm. this series is going to blow chunks. Because the action that we've seen with our eyes, and this is the part of the show that I didn't like, the actions that we've seen with our eyes does not constitute the rage that older may has now yeah because she should be having feelings of guilt despair she should be hurt okay i get that but she why should do be you want she should feel responsible jedi exactly unless her revenge is because her twin sister decided to be on their side and she feels the jedi took her away which still is too. but remember which still is a two. weak which still she is a her. weak point. She saw Oshi and she didn't realize that she was alive until she saw her. And it's not about that. It, she thought that the Jedi would took her sister away and then the fire killed her sister. That's that's not what I was talking about. Okay. But in episode three, she wanted to be a Jedi. She told her sister, No, I want to be a Jedi. She told her mom, I want to be a Jedi. She told her other mom, I want to be a Jedi. So I think, 
you know, maybe that's could be part of, but I not for me, not the level of this taste she has for them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, I, I wasn't against the episode, it didn't like turn me off, I wasn't upset about it. Um, I do think there's more to tell. I, I really hope so. I do. And then maybe the Dark Force wielder fed her bad memories. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, because when we do leave her at the end of the episode, she's alone on that planet. Somebody had to come get her. Something's well, about to go down. You, you think she's alone on the planet. True. I mean, just because you don't see anybody. Doesn't mean that they're not there. That's true. Now, um, it's eight episodes, so this is this fourth episode that's dropping tonight is the halfway point. So we're gonna we have to do, move along. Yeah. Yeah, and that, although the Ahsoka series was kind of slow until episode six, seven, eight. Yeah, but hey, episode. Six, or was it seven? The one with Anakin, that was worth the wait right there. I mean, true, but it's still it was just me, you know, all the way up to that point. So yeah, I, that's kind of how like... that's kind of how all of it goes. But I expected a lot more from this so far. I will tell you that. Well, the reason why I another reason why I, I agree with you on that, but another reason why I expect more the Obi Wan series was only given a $90 million budget. And this series was given a $180 million budget. You've got twice the budget. You haven't shown me twice the budget in episodes one through three. So you need to show me something. True. But the Obi-Wan series could sell itself because of the characters that were involved. Also there was an attach. There was an attachment with the characters from the audience from episode one of that series yeah um i need to see more from these characters that they're showing on the acolyte this yorg or whatever his name is yord yord um he has the most what? potential and he's the one that that takes his shirt off all the time same guy yeah that that guy. About? you know i want to see what kind of jedi knight he is you know he, he always looks like he's ready for action Get put a lightsaber in his hand this tonight and give him some action. I believe that Saul is also going to be a great fighter if he's given the chance. Um, not sold on the Wookie. Yeah, they should have picked a different species. Most likely should have. Yeah, don't know what he's doing living on that planet or what's going on. Uh, I'm hoping that they get back to that story, but don't pick that back up at the beginning of this episode and then run with it for 30 minutes because, you know, that would suck too. And I think one of the problems with this show is they are conveniently boxing everything up in 30 minutes. I feel like if there's more to tell or a better way to tell it, it's okay to make it longer. I don't mind 45, 50 minute episodes if I can get more out of it to make it make sense. Uh, if you want to make it short, just put it all together in one cut and make it a Disney movie. Agree. Yeah, the, the length of the episodes do bother me. Because, you you know, I think they're taking the lazy way out. Yeah. When it comes to it. Um, but yeah, I still think there's something that we still don't know because... You know, why would why did that Jedi feel so compelled to commit that suicide. he needed to commit suicide? Like why what did you feel so guilty about? Yeah. They had to have done something. They just had to. I mean, you I mean, we were just sitting there, me and Heather were watching it, and I was like those bodies are just laying there. There's no fire or smoke around them. What's going on? And he kept telling her, 
Oshi, don't look. Just keep going. Now, would there have been some sword wounds and reason why he didn't want her to look? I mean, well, I mean, they were ready to fight when they first came up in the room with, you know, the very yeah. first introduction. So they were ready to go then. So um, I did. I was intrigued because. And I could be reaching here, but isn't that like the Night Sisters or whatever that I believe they're the all shoot of the Night Sisters. You know, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, to introduce that type of. Coven or whatever they are. Mm hmm. Um, I thought that was kind of cool, especially when you seen the first one with the horns like Maul. Yes. You know, I was like, oh, OK, here we go. This might be nice, you know, but. I'm with you, though. Them, them Jedis had to do some dirt. Yeah, we just they, didn't see it. They had to. So uh, I'm hoping that they show me something tonight slash tomorrow whenever I get around to watching it. Yes. All right. Enough Star Wars talk today. Now, we are definitely, go ahead. I was just going to say, we are definitely going to be back with our talk about episode four. And it will be spoilers on it because, you know, it's a week later, folks. And if you haven't seen it yet, hit pause and go watch The Acolyte. Uh, cause, and then come back and listen to our talk. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> I this episode... Is what I'm going to call. I'm going to watch all eight because you you never know. But to me, episode four is going to be the make it or break it. To me, they have to go in a certain direction that I can see where they're going with it at least. Show me something. If it's a throwaway episode and it's only eight episodes in this season, I'm going to be hurt. You only have eight episodes. You can't afford to have a throwaway episode. Right. Agree. Now. I, I, I fear the answer to this question I'm about to ask you. And I probably already know it before I ask. Mm -hmm. Are you a Game of Thrones fan? I do like Game of Thrones. I do. So you, you've watched it. Yes, are you oh, watching Are you House of the Dragon? I am not watching that one yet. I have not seen it yet. You haven't seen the first season? No, I have not. <laughs> am I in for a treat? Oh my gosh, we got to talk about it. I need somebody to talk with it because nobody that I know watches it. And season two just started on Sunday. And this mm. is the actual dance of the dragons, the actual war and why the Targaryens fell from power. Interesting. Just like many a show, I I'm meaning to get around to it. Eventually I will. Yeah, I, so plug. are so are you complete? You've watched all the episodes of Game of Thrones, all eight seasons. Yeah, okay, including eight? the eighth season. Oh yeah, that I wasn't eight. happy with, but you know, I didn't like the way it ended. Yes. per se, but I did like how it ended per se. If that makes I, sense, I like how it ended, but how it got there. Yeah, how it got to that. Time. I mean, I don't like exactly how it ended, but I do like how it ended. In the span of three episodes, Daenerys just decides to turn mean. Well, I that no, not necessarily. I think because of that, she was at a point where she had no other options because they were, you know, they, they, the, they, they, she was down a dragon, obviously, um, and they weren't coming out of that castle no matter what she did. So the only thing he, she could do was destroy the castle. But, and, you know, she that's the fire in her blood because the Targaryens, that's the dragon blood in her. All Targaryens are crazy, dude. All that, of them. That I hear. All of them. And, like, all of the storyline that you heard from the original series, that's what the House of the Dragon is about. Mm. And the fact that you see all of these mythical dragons that they've talked about in lore, you actually see them in live action is, is, is awesome. Like 
Vormir is is the second biggest dragon ever. Like the one that you see, the head of the dragon that you see in the in the original series, you know, the the the, the skull. Yeah. That was so Virsi's Targaryen is the king at the beginning of House of the Dragon. He is the son of the dragon rider that rode that dragon that's the skulls in the there in the bottom. But once that king died, that dragon never took another rider. Mm. Vormir is the second biggest, but is the biggest in this storyline. Mm -hmm. And they just introduced the second biggest one uh at the end of season one. So yeah, there's like I know the blacks have like 13 dragons in their fold and the greens have at least four or five, but they have more men. So yeah, it's man, you gotta, you gotta get caught up so we can talk about it. I will. I will eventually. I, 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 I promise. Got to. I'm running out of time because uh, eventually it's going to be football season. And then, you know, my Sundays and Mondays are going to be gone. Speaking of football, before we close it out, I do want to mm -hmm. touch on your Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I'm a Raider fan. That's never going to change. But I'm digging that ring. Super Bowl ring was, you know, uh, put out there last week, late last week. We got to see it. Not crazy about all the red on there, but uh, I'm digging that ring. And one of the things that, you know, I talked to you about earlier was if you look at the history of the Super Bowl rings, uh, it went from a plain Jane, hey, we're going to throw a little diamond in it and say world champs on there to now rings have to be bigger, bolder, gaudy. Um, and the reason why I like the Chiefs ring so much is yes, it has a lot of stones on it, but it's the placement, how it looks. And then, you know, those extra touches. Now, if I'm correct, you flip the top on it and, uh, the little Super Bowl emblems, uh, draw out a play. Was that the play that won the Super Bowl? Yeah, that's the winning play. The Tom yeah. and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. dog or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, um, first time, last time I'm going to say it, props to your squad. And, you know, I, I, I like the ring. Well, you know, I'm an avid collector of the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, yeah what they call them the, the fake replicas. ones or whatever yeah the replicas. yeah replicas so they did the same thing last year this actually comes yeah. off mm -hmm. and it says 50 or whatever yeah but then yeah. it has the arrowhead stadium on this side mm -hmm. the so the difference this year is this has the play and this has actual Confed the gold, it's gold leaf confetti from the the parade that came down, and it's, oh, okay. I forget how many there are, but it's yeah, it's like seventeen or eight, and it stands for something. I don't know exactly what, but but I mean, if you look at them, like here's the original, here's Super Bowl four, yeah, you know, it's very plain Jane. And this is Super Bowl 54. Mm -hmm. And then this is the one, Super Bowl 57. Or 57. And you can see the difference in them. Yeah. And then the one, I mean, it's even bigger because I think on the outside here, it's like poked out and it says world champions or something like that. Yes, it does. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um now, word on the streets the, the, is the Joe typo Burrow is on designing it. his ring now for next year's Super Bowl. Yeah. It, I'm, uh, <laughs> he should. Uh, there'll be arrowheads on that one as well. Now, I do think it's funny about the typo that everybody's upset about that's on that ring. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Tell me. So, 
on the inside of the ring, and I think these have them too. Yeah, are the scores of the teams that they played in the playoffs and Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. the, ty the typo is they put Dolphins as a seventh seed. They were the sixth seed. I mean, not that it really care matters. But that was all of these real rings have seed seven. So the guy that approved those before they went to to production, yeah, he's probably uh, making fries at McDonald's now. It depends on how you look at it. I mean, Dolphin fans are probably upset, but I don't think Chief fans care. Well, I don't think the Chiefs fans care at all, but it's to me, it's like that's it, it's so minute, but that's something pretty important if you're going to put it on there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should double check every number that you put on there, no matter what. I don't even know why they put the seeds on there. Like, that's just dumb to me. Just Chiefs at Dolphins score, you know, or Dolphins at Chiefs score, or whatever, you know. Chiefs at Bills score. Well, Chiefs at Ravens score. That's part of that next level. I mean, you can only put so but many stones on the stones inside on the of the ring, though. It's on know, the inside of the ring. You can only Nobody's put so many stones see. on it. Now they're trying to put as much inside the ring as you can now. What, what was it back in the old days? We thought it was something when they when they uh, inscripted the inside where your finger goes. That's something. Now, you know, they're able to put holograms on there. They're able to. But that's what they're doing. It's all the inscription on the inside of the ring. That's what mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, it's just. Now to me, I'm like, top. I wouldn't have put it on there. I, I, yeah, I the, and the other done. thing that I've seen, and I don't know if any other team has done it yet, but the Chiefs have made their last two rings, including this one, uh, where you can wear it as a necklace. It has a little clip that comes up, and you can wear it as a necklace versus on your hand. Hmm. I don't know if anybody else has done that. Regardless of Which, who wins the Super Bowl this coming year, it's going to be interesting to see who tops this ring. Can the Chiefs top their ring? Or will somebody else come up with a ring? Whoever else wins the Super Bowl, if you win it, will it even you know, be I think, worth looking at? I think it also depends on how many you won. So let's say the Buffalo Bills, let's say they win one. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to look more like the Chiefs first one with Patrick. It's going to be nice, but it's not going to be as gaudy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but because if you look at the Patriots rings, you know, all six of those, you know, they, yeah, as they, they win, increase. they increase, you know. So I think it really depends on what team, uh, you know, did it and so forth and so I on. I am curious if, if you know, I know you're a Chiefs fan, so you're rooting for the Chiefs to win one. If I picked a team to win a Super Bowl, just based on what I think the ring would look like, I'd want the Lions to win the Super Bowl because I think they would just go crazy with that thing. Just yeah. based on their city, and they probably have no hope of ever getting back in. I mean, let's let's be honest. You're talking to the Chiefs fan here. Do I think that we're going to win the Super Bowl? Probably not, because winning three in a row has never happened. So the odds are not in our favor, so to speak. However, I would love to be the first and only team to ever do it. I am officially, you know, as a fan, I'm, I'm playing with house money. The Chiefs can't do no wrong to me this year. Except go and, you know, not win a game at all. I agree with that. And, and you know, I, I know I'm saying this about the Chiefs, but I, this is real talk right here. In Major League Baseball, you've had a team three-peat. In the NBA, you've had multiple teams three-peat. Sooner or later in the NFL, a team is going to three-peat. What baseball team is three-peated? Um, you've got to go back to like the early days of baseball. It was either okay. Yankees or Mets, something like that. Gotcha. It, it, it wasn't really in the modern era. M modern era, gotcha. Yeah. but I mean, because technically you've had mo you know old-school football teams – win three in a row but not modern era super bowl winners yeah so eventually it's going to happen and if it's going to happen you know nobody really can talk about it until you've had a back-to-back -back champ here's where we exactly. are exactly i mean and if the chiefs don't get in whoever wins the super bowl 
they've got to win it again the following year just to start a three-peat conversation. So, yes. yeah. It's just cool to be able to have the opportunity to do it. Now, but, you know, the odds are not in our favor. I, I do agree with you. You are playing with the house's money. Uh, you got a chance to witness one, two, three Super Bowls. Um, well, technically two wins, but they were in three Super Bowls. You know, that one they lost to the Bucks. you know, the Brady Bowl or whatever you want to call it. We've but won were three there. and you, we're in yeah, four. Yeah, but you weren't around for the Lynn Dawson one, so we're not counting that. Dude, we have four Super Bowl wins. Patrick well, Mahomes has three rings. That, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm selling you short. I'm selling you short. My bad. It's okay. I don't, I don't know why I kept thinking you were tied with us. Yeah, you're one up on us. So, you know, yeah. it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. But those. And no, I didn't see the original one. Yeah, no, no. I didn't even see the original one. That was 69. That was a year before I was born. But it's, it, it's all good. Uh, you know, much props to you. Everybody should experience it, no matter who your team is. You know, just that feeling. I felt it with my Raiders three times. 80, 83. And, and, and unfortunately, we got there in 2000 fell flat on our asses and it didn't work out too well. 2000. Also against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 2002. 2000, it, it doesn't matter. We fell flat on our, asses. I'm just saying 2000, the Ravens won 2001, yeah, the yeah, Patriots right. won. And then y'all yeah, played the Bucks in 02. Yeah. That one in 2000 did kind of hurt too, because the Ravens beat the, uh, the Raiders in the playoffs. That was that nine to nothing game or nine to three game. Where yeah, Gannon Gannon was knocked out, wasn't he? Yes, he was. But our defense was holding their own until Shannon Sharp broke that long run. Yeah. Old ass Shannon Sharp, who should have been retired from the Broncos and never played a lick again, plays for the Ravens and makes that run. Yeah. Gets a third one. Yep. All right, my brother. We're getting ready to uh exit stage right. Uh before we go. Everybody watching this on YouTube, you know how I always say, leave us a like, a comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. If you're one of the listeners on your favorite podcast feed, do the same thing. Uh, let us know that you're there. Show us some love. If you want to just talk to us uh, mano y mano, you can always email at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. We really, really appreciate you. The subscriber count on YouTube is going up. I like that. Y'all keep it coming. I love the love. And uh, Big Show, take us on out of here. Just reiterate, appreciate you guys checking this out. Uh, you know, I enjoy the opportunity to get some stuff off my chest, even if it's corny shit. Um, you know, I talked to a few of our listeners who are friends of mine, and I really appreciate the, uh, uh, you know, following us weekly, letting us know that you're watching or listening. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but if this is your first time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you can know when we uh, post some things. And then, yeah, we will uh, see you next week. Remember, love to your loved ones. Give them a big old hug and a kiss because tomorrow is not promised. Good night, Peace. everybody.